INMPI brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. This is when we take a look at something new over on DigiKey. Lady Ada, what is it this week? Okay, this week it's from NXP. Um, and I want to get the part number correct. This is the P3S0200 GMX. This is an I3C bi directional switch. Um, and you might be like, hey, uh, you know, you just said, and it comes in this package, the XQFN10. And I'd be like, hey, you just made a, a mistake when you said I3C, you meant I2C, right? Because what is I3C? Well, this is I on NPI and we have an extra I. This is, uh, a, you know, we're gonna talk about I3C because I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, the differences between I3C and I2C um, and there's, yeah, there's an extra I. This is the next generation of what I call I squared C. I guess this is I cubed C. I don't know, we have to come up with a name. Um, I have started to see more sensors and devices with I3C, sometimes called MIPI I3C um, interfaces. And uh, so I took a little bit of a deep dive and I thought I'd tell you all about it and then you'll know why you need this I3C switch. Um, so first up, this is what it is. It's actually, you know, this is still very useful. Don't forget, this is uh, also compatible with I2C devices. Uh, you have your mic controller on the left. Uh, you can connect the um, A and B or SCL and SDA. And um, you also have a select and output enable. Output enable is like, you know, is the whole thing active? And select lets you connect either to um, A1, B1 or A2, B2. So, you know, we've got an eight way um, switch for I squared C, but this is like, you know, you're not changing some like sub address and you just, when S is high, you connect to one of the targets. When S is low, you connect to the other. So it's an easy way to connect two devices of the same I squared C address without having to do any funky muxing. Um, so this is a useful switch just for like, you have two devices of the same address or maybe for some reason they conflict or whatever, you wanna keep them uh, separated. And of course you can turn off the output enable to save power. Um, this is what it looks like on the inside. It's, you know, there's like this charge pump uh, because you have to be able to control up to five volt logic levels. Uh, and the control logic is, support is in there as well. Um, so it's pretty simple. It's not a very complicated design. Um, and also, if, you, if you're familiar, it looks a lot like the um, I squared C logic level shifting that um, we use all the time for converting between three and five volt logic level. Um, so uh, if you didn't know, which is fine, now you know, today's a day you've learned that the I squared C bus specification was written and designed by NXP Philips. Um, Philips, which is, uh, you know, owned by NXP now. Um, they wrote the original I squared C bus specification, which is uh, written here. And um, they, I think this was published in like the 80s and then 1.0 was released in uh, 1992. Um, it's been updated. And this is what the original I squared C um, description was kind of intended to be. You'd have I squared, you know, the SDA line and the SCL line. And look, you can connect, you know, your microcontroller driver and then you've got some RAM and you've got an ADC and you've got an LCD and a gate array. Look at us, we're having so much fun. Everything is just sharing these two pins. Isn't it wonderful and perfect? Well, that's not actually what ended up happening. Um, <laughs> so what we wanted was to have all these devices share two pins, but as I'm sure anyone out there who's actually implemented I squared C devices, um, it's never quite that. There's d -readies, there's IRQs, there's select pins. There's like always more stuff. Um, because I squared C is, you know, a polling interface and you need interrupts or you need to have like data readies or selects or there's other, you know, things that you have to connect to or address changes. And so, um, you know, and in intermixing with SPI devices because you need higher speeds and then like now you have a chip select for every line. So what I3C is intended to do is replace all of that with a high speed Again, two pin interface. Well, really, what we intended is what we got. So like for real this time, right? For real. Um, so, you know, MIPI, um, you know, which you may be familiar because they also published a display and, and camera specifications and other specifications. Uh, they do publish the I3C spec. They do have this annoying ass thing where you have to log in to download, although you can find it on like Scribd and stuff. Um, and then like, if you want the official version, if you remember, I don't completely understand it. I think it's kind of silly. I think if you have a spec, just publish the spec. Um, but this isn't about them. This is about uh, this I two three I three C switch. So just going to move along. You can get the full specification from the MIPI website. They also have a great fact. Um, 
And this is basically, uh, you know, com compare and contrast. So in the middle, I squared C, and you see there's SDA and SCL, but then there's like interrupt pins. On the right, there is SPI, and, um, you know, they share clock data in, data out, but then the chip select lines are separate, and also there's interrupt pins. Um, and then the left, amazing, I3C. Um, no, I, you know, no chip select lines and no interrupt lines. Why? Uh, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so here's the, like, the first I3C spec um, that was published and some of the things that they're going for. So some of the things that are interesting, I mean, there's a lot. There's like, uh, first off, it's back compatible with I2C, which I think is really cool. Um, there's standard data rates and high data rates. So you can, you can basically get to SPI type speeds, uh, you know, 12.5 uh, megabits per second megahertz uh, clock rate. Um, there is, uh, again, you know, backwards compatibility. Um, there's hot join, cap you know, capability. There's in-band interrupt capabilities. Um, there's low power and, um, you know, uh, basically getting rid of like the, the passive pull-up capabilities. Um, trying to standardize on the command codes. And there's like some more advanced stuff like the Q support, which I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't quite read into that. There's also CRC uh, that you can do. But basically you can put, you, you know, you can use I squared C with I squared C and I3C devices, and then you can like pop into I3C mode um, by doing special addressing. You write to the address 7E to kind of tell I3C devices, hey, we're going to put into, um, we're going to put you into I3C mode, and then you can go into this um, high speed support. So this is, you can see, it's, it's meant to be back compatible. Um, hey, you know that clock stretching is a total pain? Well, they took it out. Uh, you can no longer clock stretch in I3C. So that's the one thing that is not supported. And also pull-up resistors are done differently. Um, instead of having these passive pull-ups, which uh, draw current and slow down the bus because you have to charge the capacitance of the line and the gates, um, the SDA and SCL lines, you can have, you know, they have these pull-ups built in, but they switch into active push-pull mode. And so that's how you can get the, those high speeds. Um, also, uh, they didn't, they no longer support 10-bit addresses because uh, basically nothing ever supported the 10-bit addresses. I've never even seen it. Um, and so they just, uh, they just said, hey, nobody used this, so we're tossing it out. But I really like that they got rid of clock stretching. But instead they added some things that will help with um, clock stretching. Oh, this is the um, address. You're wondering like, how do you send I3C commands? They go to address um, OX7E because OX7E is not a valid, um, it's a reserved I2C address. Um, in case you didn't know anything, I think above uh, 78 is, um, unavailable, anything below 10 is unavailable. And then of course, zero, zero is the all call. Um, I do recommend in the text version of this um, INMPI, I'm, like, I, I'm gonna link to a really good uh, presentation from NXP about um, I3C, which goes into um, low level details of this. Um, oh, one of the things I forgot to, oh, can you go um, back, uh, sorry to hear. I forgot there was one thing I wanted to mention um, because I, I had the detail in the text, but I couldn't find a good, um, I, I do have an image, but it, it's not described well. So you'll notice in the middle image, there's I squared C and there's the SDA and SCL lines and there's the interrupts. And then you'll see on the left, there is no interrupt. So when they got rid of clock stretching, right? Clock stretching is often used for, you want to uh, read data from a sensor. So you, you say, I'm reading from this address or you're writing like start a command and then you want to know when it's time to read the data because it has to do a humidity sensor check or you know, take the fusion of some um, accelerometer data. Clock stretching is what a lot of sensors use to tell the controller, hey, hold on, I'm gonna get that data for you, just like give me you know, a couple milliseconds to do so. But clock stretching just became a pain because you know, not all hardware supports it and the timeout's variable and it can hang the bus and some devices don't like it and so, the right thing to do is to have an interrupt line so you can write to the I2C peripheral and say, look, I'm going to, a you know, I'm asking you for humidity data and then the interrupt pin toggles to tell you, okay, it's time for you to pull to read um, that sensor data. That way you're not pulling constantly uh, using up um, a lot of uh, power and computation time because you have to be awake to, to constantly pull when it's ready. And that's because I2C is, you know, controller run only, only you can only only data can be requested by the controller. The peripherals can't push data back. It's not asynchronous like UART. Um, but what's neat about I3C is they have this thing called, um, uh, oh wait, this is the wrong, wrong slide. But it, it's still, this is a good presentation. So 
they, they use in-band signaling where um, this shows the high speed stuff where it goes from push-pull into active um, push, uh, sorry, open drain to push-pull mode and that's how you get into higher speeds. But the other thing you can do is in-band signaling where the peripheral, um, sorry, the controller can release the bus and say, hey, when the peripheral is ready, it can signal on the bus that it's ready to be read and then you don't need those interrupt lines anymore. And I think that's quite interesting because one of the things that drives me a little nuts about I2C is like, you've got this dream of only using two pins, but then before you know it, you need like two other pins just to manage interrupts and data ready and wakes and all that good stuff. Um, well, all that is gonna be built into I3C. Um, you're gonna start seeing, you know, I'm starting to see sensors with I3C, especially ST and NXP devices. Um, I haven't yet seen any low cost mic controllers with I3C, but I think you're gonna see it soon. Uh, and of course you could implement this in PIO. So if you're, you know, given that I3C is back compatible with I2C, um, a chip like this switch, getting back to the INMPI, the P3S0200, uh, is really nice because um, if you do use this switch in your design, it can run at the low frequencies, 100, 400 kilohertz of I2C, and then when we all upgrade to I3C over the next decade or so, you, know, you won't have to respect the design. It'll be ready to use I3C um, as your sensors, you know, like I've seen ST sensors, their magnetometer will, the old version is I2C and then the next version is I2C or I, I3C. Um, you'll be able to upgrade all your devices and you won't have to switch out the switch part huh. because it'll all be ready for um, that high speed and, and these funky capabilities of I3C. It's available on DigiKey. So that was your lesson. Now you know, because I was like, there's a switch, it's handy, but why do you want the switch? Now you know you're like ready. There's like almost 5,000 in stock. Ready for the future. Well, I got five of them. Okay. I mean, I, this just came into stock like yesterday, okay. so I, I picked some up. Do you want to uh, show anything on the overhead? No, I, they, there wasn't any videos. Okay. I will say the, you know, the only thing is check out, you know, when I post the, the, the text, uh, we post the text tomorrow the next day, uh, check out the presentation of NXP because it's very nice high level and trace level details between I2C and I3C. And it'll be, it'll be very helpful as you implement I3C so you know what are the constraints. All right, good explanation. Lady Ada. I know. And that's this week's Eye on MPI. Eye on MPI.